Hi guys. So I think majority of you have done these first set of slides. Cool. So if any of you haven't done these slides, please just let me know um, so I can help you and go over it with you. But as far as I'm aware, we should all be here on the thrust stage. Okay. So the first thing I want you to ask yourselves, and you can answer this question on your own, is the difference between a thrust stage and a proscenium arch stage. Okay. So what do, what do you notice that is different between the two stages? Okay. So basically the thrust stage gets its name because of the fact that it, it literally thrusts into the audience. It's almost like a, a model's runway. It goes out into the audience um, much further than a normal proscenium arch stage would, hence the name, a thrust stage. Okay. Um, it does have three sets of seating areas, two that go down the side and one at the back here. So the stage would be in the middle of those three. As you can look, you can go back and look at the picture. Um, so if we go back and look at the picture, you see, there's the stage. Here's one set of audience. Here's another set of audience. And here's the third set of audience. Okay, so it's surrounded by three audience or state, three audience sitting areas. Um, the thrust stage can be any number of shapes. It's not always square, um, but it still provides elements that a director would have to work around because of it being a thrust stage. How exactly do they work around the fact that the audience is going to have see the backs of some of the characters at some point in time? So um, those are things that you need to bear in mind. Okay. Um, it was one of the earliest types of stages that they had during um, in the, it, sorry, during the Greek times um, and in Europe, they really enjoyed thrust stage they thought it was quite an interesting stage and um how it could be used and then i've asked the question here how would the stage affect the audience well i already answered that for you but it would mainly be the fact that they would have the backs of the actors to them at some point in time okay also gave them give gave them a very different way of viewing things okay um, it allows for a close actor audience relationship because there is no like um, wall between them. There's nothing there for the audience to feel like they're being like a step away from the actual action itself. Um, so a lot of breaking the fourth wall would happen. Um, right. What would happen here if we look here at this put? moment blocking and set pieces needed to be considered carefully all right you can't now go and take like a massive tree and put a massive tree at the center in the middle at the front of the stage right because if we go back and look imagine having a big tree right there what's going to happen okay the audience members that are here won't be able to see any action happening behind that tree so as a director, you had to make smart choices about what you would put on stage on this type of stage. You have to make smart choices on a proscenium arch stage too, but in general with the um, thrust stage, they wouldn't have big pieces of scenery because it just wouldn't work. Um, blocking as well, guys, is a specific definition for blocking. Blocking is not um, you as an actor blocking someone else. It's the opposite of that. When I say go block your scene. What I'm asking you to consider is how and where you place your actors and your set pieces in order to not block one another or the actors if it's a set piece. Okay. So that is the definition. All right. Blocking is used to ensure that you do not block or obstruct the view of a fellow actor with a set piece or yourself. Please make sure you write that down. Um, the, th the thrust stage is also known as the platform stage or here it's, sorry, it's a bit blocked off because of the video here, but it says all.